Kama heva zwe. Neva zakatu ndodo wa wiki no. I thank the Lord for this week. Katusabe. Let us pray. Tukwe baza no lo na kuluwa lero. We thank you for today. And we appreciate you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because in our mind we can't. But you enable us and you exalt us. This is my humble appeal as we're going to hear your word, Lord. May our hearts be opened up to hear from you. And oh Holy Spirit, we pray that you may cover our hearts. You may teach us your word. That we may walk with through it. After all is done, we'll give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Andrew Semakula is the name from Mukono. I thank the Lord for the opportunity granted to me today. Because when I read and without wasting time, let us go into the scripture that made the theme for this week. Matayo Esura. Matthew chapter 5, 13. The, the theme saying having enough salt. Is your character salted? Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out to be trampled by men. It's one of the strong chapters in the Bible. And one of the teachings that Jesus made, and it was a strong teaching. We'll find them in Matthew 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's when Jesus lifted the pass mark of salvation. But here, after giving a blessing, saying you are blessed if you do this, here he says, you are the salt of the world. Jesus calls us the salt of the world. I will not explain the types of soul. But in one way or the other, it's like as if he's saying that you are an example, you're exemplary unto the world. When the world is reflecting or admiring, they admire your character. He says that our character ought to be desired and admired by the world. People who have not yet received salvation. That when they see our character and behavior. The way we talk. Our humbleness and calmness. Our humanity. Our honesty that we are a role model unto the world. That we are something that the world admires, people saying that how I wish I get such a life. How I wish I can walk like him. How I wish I can speak like the sons of men. How I wish I'm honest like the sons of God. We are 
the reflection of the world. The world desires for our lives. I did not start the theme. If I go it deep into it, you get angry for those who start the theme. But when you wear yourself personally, does the world admire you? Or we merely leave it there? It is very easy that we whom they say we are the, the example of the world, we make no difference. One of the qualities that is going to help us inherit eternal life is called the character. Trust me, without character, there is no eternal life. And yet our character ought to look like that of Christ. And whatever Christ expects out of us, he will not reduce any. Let me give you another scripture. Colossians 4 and 5. Colossians 4, 5, and 6. We are called the salt of the world. We put our words, our, our deeds, and the world reflects to them and can't do anything. We are the role models of the world. In one or the other. In that, if you want to see how the world, in heaven people, things will be, uh, you just come into church and see how people do things, and then you say, oh, this is how in heaven it will be, this is how the angels do it. Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. The Bible tells us to walk with wisdom unto the world, unto the outsiders. We ought to walk having nothing that can make the world stumble. Salvation is really good. The leader of this nation said, he said that if he will have retired from being a president, he said that he will not go to UN as UN had told him that retire, we give you a position. He said, no, 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 they don't employ an elder man. And he said that after he retires, he will serve the Lord. But you tell him that even the Lord does not want people who have retired. God wants people who are still fresh. And if you're there, you're saying, if I grow old, then I'll serve the Lord after doing this. No, God wants fresh things that have soup. It's not that we bring old things into heaven. That be wise in the way you act towards the outsiders. Make, make the most every very opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace. Six. That 
that let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Our character, our character helps us that our, our words are salted. The way we behave. When it does not really alarm. There are people they can give the microphone. They tell them to speak where yet everyone is on tension. Whatever they speak out. You, You're always on tension of what he's speaking, thinking that he may throw a bomb and at the end everyone breathes a high breath and say, oh, we are, we are saved. Therefore, we ought to be that when we are making our speeches, our words are sweet unto the hearts of people. From where you begin from to the end of it all, let it be you in the mood or not in the mood. The Lord desires that your words are salted. That your words are encouraging. But maybe according to your character, only arrows come out of your words. They spin. They pierce people by the time someone leaves you, he's pierced. Maybe you are in a, a born again in a church, but you are like an, an, an animal called Namunung in Luganda. It's called a peacock, thank you. This animal, it walks with its thorns. When you come to eat, it runs away. It throws thorns. It is hardly caught. It, it runs as thorns come out of it. You may be a born again, raising up your hands in worship, praising, but let the people you pass by, you go spinning them with, with thorns like that animal. He says that let your conversation be always filled of grace, seasoned with salt. Character is key in this journey of salvation. It is because of our character that we will attain salvation. And the Lord examines our character. Whether you want it or not. And there is something that will come in last. As we are going to enter heaven. Jesus is going to stand at the gate. And at the gate, he will be uh, searching for what they call character. Let me show you how he's going to examine it. The book of Amos 7 7. Amos chapter 7 and verse 7. The Bible teaches and says, Then the Lord This is what he showed me. The Lord was standing by the wall that had been built, built true to plumb with a plumb line in his hand. Eight. And the Lord asked me, What do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, Look, I am setting a plumb line among my people, Israel. I will spare them no longer. 
Therefore, before entering heaven, there is a plumb line. There is no builder in this world. My friend is a builder. Any builder as is going to build a, a building, he has a, an a rope that they used to measure the line. It's a plumb line here. He's always with it. Whenever they add on another brick, before they fasten it with cement, there is something that they put on the top and a, a, another, another metallic substance falls down and it's a plumb line to see how straight the building is. And if the builder has made the building go astray, another expert will come and just put on a plumb line. Once the, 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 this plumb line falls aside, he will say, break the wall to this brick. They, they went astray. You will not pass Jesus according to this scripture, not until he has put a plumb line unto you. But you don't know where Jesus will put his plumb line. He may put it on the mouth. At the end of the day, he says, no, 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 no. His words, the plumb line has gone astray. A plumb line is all to go down, but to some of us, it's going parallel. Because of the character, it's already hardened. You will not know where he will bless it. May bless it on your head. He may put it on the head to measure the character, the mouth to measure the words. You may not know where he will put it. You will not know where Jesus will put the plumb line. He may put it on the fingers at the end of the day to see that the theft in you therefore you don't know where he will put it and he can put it on the lower, lower limbs or the west from the waistline and put it down you don't know how he will measure to some it may be even lighting red showing it's already high or it's shooting he says I will not pass by them any longer do you see eight and, his, and the Lord asked me, what do you see, Amos? A plumb line, I replied. Then the Lord said, look, I am setting a plumb line among my people Israel. I will spare them no longer. The character of us, the sons of God, maybe we make a lot of noise in church. But things do not work according to the way you shout. But the character, not shouting, I love you, Lord. He wants to measure and see. How deep am I into you? Let me see whether I'll find the scripture. Galatians 4. Galatians. Galatians 4. Galatians 4. The Baba said, 
that my dear children, for whom I am again in the pain of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. That my young children he says that my dear children for whom I am again in pains of birth until Christ is formed in you our prayer should be that Lord build your character within me Build the divine character that is acceptable in heaven. My carnal character does not help me go through. There is a way that the Lord wants us to do his things. He wants us to do things as sons of God. Whenever the character of God is built within us, it is a mark that we are likened to Christ. What separates the sons of the devil and the sons of God is the character. The sons of the devil, their character is far different from that of the sons of men. Of God. Praise the Lord. The character of the sons of God ought to be that our character is perfected unto the the life of those who are going to inherit the, the kingdom of God. And it's the character of God that is going to establish us in heaven. They work on the character when we are still here on earth. If, if it fails here in heaven, it will not be built in us. It, but, we leave the earth with our character. By the way, a chimku chobugaga jeteke do kujamu simuno, bajita ambala. One of the treasures that we ought to live with from the earth to heaven is called character. And one of the ways of things as to why we are left out from the time we receive, from the time we receive salvation is that the character of God may be built in us. The devil was in heaven but the Bible says that he was sent out of heaven. But why? Once his character was hard to deal with there is something I think about and I say how can you really go to heaven and then you sent out in the air. because the devil was there but then he was sent out once his character failed to connect with the character in heaven when Jesus is teaching in Matthew 7 16 he says that if you want to see those that will inherit eternal life you will see them by their character you will tell them by their deeds by their their actions by the way they speak. What, what discerns the sons of God from the sons of the devil is character. Praise the Lord. Character. Character is key character is the foundation of salvation. The foundation of salvation is character. If you want to be established in salvation, your character ought to be your foundation. And you ought to be mindful to your character. However much big things you build, even though you're on high to which level, let it be that you are an artist who can really impact nations. Let it be that your name is famous to a far. But once the foundation of character is not built, all that you've built will be broken 
down. Let it be that we are ministers and we build a church that is the greatest church in the entire world. Once the foundation of the character is weak, however good the ministry will be, it will break down. The the foundation of marriage is character. Even if a person spends a number of years, yet the character, the foundation of a character is dead. Ahead, trust me, there is a great fall. Praise the Lord. What helps such a one is the foundation of the character. Praise the Lord. It is character that helps us to be honest and truthful. It is the character that helps us to be in salvation when you are pure. And it's the character that helps us to be humble. Praise the Lord. We do not mind however much noise you will make. Even though you're so anointed. Even though you have a great church. Even though you have a very big gift. But ahead of time, if you're not mindful of the character. Oh, trust me, whatever you've built will fall down. Praise the good Lord. The character can ruin a man or a woman. Let it be his. One of the things we ought to cry unto God for is for us to tell him that, Lord, before you take me to any higher place, please build my character that I may not fall down like a jackfruit. Give me character. Lord, I want a blessing. But before you give me this blessing, I pray you build fast my character because my character will sustain my blessing and if not that, it will be the character to drag me into hell. What do you think strike down Samson? If it was anointing, Samson was greatly anointed. If it is mighty and strength, Samson had power. They say he carried the gate. That he uprooted the gate. And walked with it three kilometers. But the gate, a thousand, a hundred people could make noise in the evening to close it. But what, and what helps any door to open up very well? Other patterns that they put on you will not feel the way because it's moving. But be, even though this gate had patterns onto it, but when they are pushing this gate, a hundred men had to make noise to motivate themselves Samson to push it. it. But when Samson came, he just uprooted it and walked and went. And the entire world saw this man. But once he was not mindful of his character, a mighty man, an anointed man, died when his eyes were plucked out. Why? Because of his character. Therefore, let's not be threatened with power and anointing. Because even the mighty men have fallen at battle. What throws them down is the character. The character is something very key. Praise the living God. Even though you're talented, having everything, once your character is not good, be ready for a fall. Let me read Ecclesiastes 10. Ecclesiastes 10, 1. Let's read it. Let's read it. 
Bwechiti obusirusiru obutono Bumala wa magezi nechitiwa As dead flies give perfume and uh, perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honor. That a dead fly, dead actions, dead character, it, this makes something good bad. As the Bible says that as gold is in the mouth of a, a pig, likewise to a beautiful woman without counsel. However beautiful you may be, but your character is dead. All your perfume is dead. Praise the Lord. Let us be mindful of what's called the character. Once any beauty has no character, how can you see your character? And if you want to consider character right now, everyone will get 100%. But if you want to know how your character, Amidst when people have risen against you, you've done something, you've been with your husband, your home, he was home the whole day, you've cooked food, and you burnt the food, you bought the food to your husband, you're in spirit, and your man makes a statement. Oh, mommy, this food was burnt. Will it be eaten? Those are the things that really test our character. If, if, it, if it's not eatable, you go and cook it. Then you've started coming out of the shell. The Bible says that when a foolish man is quiet, they may think he's wise. You may keep quiet. And they think you're wise enough. But you ought to find something that stares you and people say, oh, maybe he was just keeping quiet. This is his character. You hear of the commotion that befell in COVID. And it was not among the people who are not yet born again only, but even among the born again. The husband no muchala, and the wife waka, to stay home down. in a lockdown. Then commotion came at home. Luwaji. Why? Umuami the husband is home, but today no muchala. seated with the wife. Yeah. Open for us. Uh, you lift the lockdown. Rather, we are dying. Police yagamba wait. The police said that there is a lot of domestic violence. Do you think it was among the non-born against only? Even the born against. He can bear, be patient with the wife and the wife can be patient with the husband. Yet they come back in the night. When the husband comes back in the night. But when he spends the day home and sleeps the following day home for three days there is some kind of conflict then the wife starts asking the husband won't you have some work no they told us to stay home because you cannot bear it together what shakes the married people in a small lockdown is putting the character together and one conflict with the other. We find conflicts in a family, fightings in a family. Why? They were spiritual because they were distant from each other. Do you know that to some of us you can be good to people simply because you are distanced from them? There are people who are good because they are far from you. But if you bring them closer, 
Rwanda. It's when you test them and say, eh, this chili is from Rwanda. Our character is sour. Our character as sons of God, we ought to have worked on our character. We ought to have given it to Christ and it breaks them. That it takes out everything that is not acceptable. That we are likened to Christ. That we can fit in all categories of people. Among us the different people, among us the good people, when you can be with them, and even unto the people who seem not to be good, you can live with them and have your peace. The Bible teaches and says, in the book of Proverbs chapter 16 and 32, Proverbs 16, 32. We are talking about character of the sons of men who are going to inherit eternal life. Proverbs 16, 32 says, Better a patient man than a warrior, a man who controls his temper than one who takes a city. That a person who is patient with a person who is patient and is not easily angered that I've lost my temper, I've lost my temper. The Bible says that he is good, better than a warrior. But how is he better than a warrior? He took all his his strength and centered it on controlling his character. He does not easily lose temper. He takes long to get angry. He is greater than warriors. And we want warriors. And he says that one with self-control than one who takes the city. That you can have self-control you control yourself. Amid a need, you can control yourself. You can control yourself. The Lord is going to test us in many things to see our character. Recently, in COVID, I got a word. The Lord was telling me, die unto money. Die unto money. When you die unto money, that is when I will bless you. But I saw I don't steal. But he's telling me this this desiring heart. Even though they've given it to you, you last so much. And I started praying, Lord, help me that I may die unto money, that money takes me no more. That I'm not taken by money. Recently, last month, I went to preach to Mbali. And I got a hotel where to reside. They fixed it very well. And I entered with my bag. Things that throw us down or things that really waste us are not great. And I saw that in the chair, there was 500 shillings. And I said, the person who spent the night here, maybe it was their money. But he threw it down. But maybe he has gone already. Do you know that rich people are mindful of this small money? Wealthy people. Where you can see a poor man that is poor. When they go to the shop, they say, you, are, you have balance of 200. Oh, leave the 200. A wealthy man. A wealthy man. Buys a car of a hundred millions. And the person who 
and there is a balance of 10,000, he says, oh, no, give me my 10,000 first before you give me the receipt. He puts the 10,000 in the pocket before the <inaudible> receipt. <inaudible> and when a rich man sends you, because he asked you for anything, he first takes his balance. I also grasped the way of the rich man. The, the 500 coin fell in the chair. And I said it's for the person who sweeps, no, he cannot have the money. No. But the 500 shilling wouldn't buy something great. But I said, let me take it and put it in the fatty bag pocket. I did not put it in my pocket, but I put it in my handbag, handbag luggage, it far deep. Pastor the pastor went to preach the gospel. I have my money here. The money for hotel and money to live. And balance. I found 500 that does not even buy water. I took it first. And, and put it in my handbag in a case to be there. Then the voice asked me, is that money yours? I also saw the money. It didn't have the owner. The owner lived maybe to Kenya or where. I spent almost 30 minutes struggling with 500 shillings. And I said, if I leave it, I'll be like a fool who doesn't love money. Will I just be a foolish man? I think the question comes, is the money yours? Leave it there. Leaving money. Even when I was setting off, I left it on a table. But even after my days, I put the money on the table and the, clean, the cleaners could come and clean not taking it thinking that it's mine but it was not mine as well. But whenever I could come back after ministry the eyes could land on the 500 shillings and I said they refused to take it. And I just said, let me leave it there, even though it couldn't buy anything. And the things that really throw us down are minor, small things. You can take it and he says, look at a thief and you say, I just picked it, but was it yours? And listen to this. The people who love picking, picking. Yes, they are money. They put it in the far deep. Of what? They don't want to throw money down. But they want to pick money. One person said that if you want to pick money, because you want to pick money, wake up one day, start throwing money. If you throw, you will get what to pick. A one who controls their spirit. When you have self-control, control of what? You can have self-control amidst a wrangle. As people are abusing you, when you can control yourself and say, I will not quarrel to anyone, a person who guards their spirit is greater than warriors who can break a city. You can have self-control amidst this generation adultery when you can control yourself your character and you don't fall into fornication and adultery 
Go manyiti, they don't rose now, you want to say, no, but no, but I tell you, radio, this man, you be a radio, you're going to get a bit of a city radio. I want to speak my things when I'm not on radio. Go manyiti, I'm aware of the banji, but never know, but guamuda. Do you know that many ministers are really uh, taken, bafumbo, married, niate, but they are taken by sisters in the choir and things that really take them are not great things. But you can have self-control even amid this adultery. Even though a sister comes to the secretary working in an office, dressing almost naked, her dress is all skimpy like a shirt. And she loves, she loves to bend and sweep before the boss. She comes and, 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 sweep, and then she starts more cleaning as she's turning. When you can control, control yourself amidst fornication. People don't love such gospel. When you can control yourself, amid is when a brother holds your breast, you ask them, Is this breast yours? But the people we have in this generation, the, the breasts are already out. They are saying, Who can touch my breast? Who can touch my breast? But lack of self control. If you're a young man, Amid is a generation when sisters sit with a great responsibility. Sister. They put on something very short. And she quetegas before the brothers. And no one can trap a, a trap and is far. Whoever puts the traps their trap, they are closed. Seeing whether the trap has really grasped something. They put a hank in the center. But the brother, you are a single or a young man. Amen. Even though they have trapped their trap and you see all the history and geography, your character says, I will not be shaken. Those are the men that are going to inherit eternal life. You will not tell such to Jesus. You know when I saw the third, that it, I was chastened. What else would you see? Would you see hair? I told the youths in my church. I began with the married people. And I told them we can inherit eternal life. Not having committed fornication or adultery. Things are easy. If you're married, you want to see the thigh, go home, tell your wife, show me your wife your thigh and spend the whole day watching the thigh. If you're a young man, not yet married, you're not going to tell anyone. Go back home, sit on your bed, and send the thigh. Open and remain in an hour. Look at your thigh, be filled. We can inherit eternal life, amen. You cannot, tell, you cannot tell Jesus, I saw the thigh. What would you have seen? Our character is what helps us to stand firm amid his temptations when you're strong. Job says, I made a vow with my eyes not to look at any woman. How would I really look at a woman and admire her? Say amen. We can control ourselves. A person who guards their heart is greater than warriors who break the city. Amid these people who are abusive, amid these people who really speak ill against you, when you can control yourself and don't quarrel, 
Why? Why? God is going to test us. He brings you a test. When you are still in the flesh. He brings things that test us. When we are still putting on the flesh. That we may overcome. And after overcoming. Which kind of testimony that will you give that I overcome this? Those are the things we ought to overcome. You overcome men. Listen to this. Even if you're married, because some unmarried people will say, When will I get married and really get the men who be truth me? The work of men is to be truth women. The sons of men, what is your work? Is to overcome temptations, amen. Amid his needs. Within COVID, no job, you've been a teacher, and the man tells you, if you love me, I will not only pay for rent, house in well. And you say, because of my character, I'm ready to sleep on a tree like a bird that I may blow by the wind. But I cannot take my skirt down because I'm passing heaven. I'm not cheap like that. Who controls his spirit? Don't tell us. You know, I went and did, and everyone. And everyone can have an excuse. One time they found a man in Machindi. They beat him, asking him, Why did you go into another man's house? He went in the house of a married man and was found there. And he gave an excuse. Forgive me. She opened up the door. Do you open to? Every door that is opened up for you, who controls their character, is greater than warriors. Praise the living God. You know, when God is to test our character, He blesses you amid His people. Our characters are built. Oh, you will not be alone and think that a character will be built in you. A character is built when we are Midst people. Amidst people. And God places us amidst people. People who are contrary to our desires that our character may be built. Praise the living God. You cannot know the rot in you not until someone comes closer to you. I had my wife and I still have my wife. But before marrying her I had peace in my room. I had two rooms. It was eight by eight. In Chibuye. Chibuye. In Chibuye. Thank you. But I had peace. I could not quarrel. I go to church. I come back. The peace in my home. I, I bought my things. The Lord had come out for me. I bought my chairs. The Lord had lifted my level. And I could feel myself. Because a person from Bulemez. From the house of my mother, Mrs. Namatov. There was one chair only. And she was the only one sitting there. I also bought a sofa. Together with the dining. I bought a television set. With a fridge. <laughs> I will tell you the part of the fridge. Because, because the day I bought a fridge, I did not sleep that night. I put it on to, to bring ice and I spent the whole night 
There is no ice. It it have ice. ice. <laughs> and when it froze ice, I took it out of the night and I started taking it. I had my water carpet. It was brown. It was in all the rooms. And when you reach the house of a bachelor, Semakula, you would really desire it if you are a young man. The house was organized. The house was organized, the carpet was shining, I could clean it all the times. All the things we are waiting for the madam and saying, when she comes, we'll enjoy this wealth. Everyone is rich in their way. I bought my chairs at 130,000 shillings. There comes my wife. Little did I know that within me something was not yet touched. I could spend a year without quarreling the person. At church immediately after service, by the time they confessed the grace, when I already held my Bible going back into my bungalow, I got married to my wife. And I said like this, a woman that I will marry will have scored because if I give you all this peace what else will you need even though she does what or what I don't quarrel it brings my, the madam the day we came from the hotel to home I, I had my way my bed was a five by six but there was a way I sleep. I sleep at the edge. <laughs> at the edge of the bed as if I'm just, just in the bed. No matter what you do, I don't take sleep. I come at the edge. When we entered with the madam, she entered the bedroom. The first thing she did, she sat where I sleep. She sat where I sleep. From the sitting room, she was seated. I told her, extend her at the wall. She didn't say what. I said, no, let's sleep. It's late, but extend I sleep. And she said, and she said, I'm going to sleep here. And I said, no, mommy, mommy. This is where I sleep. <laughs> if I don't sleep here, sleep will not come. And she kept saying, and you know God is a hard person. There is a way he makes his combination. When he see a person who speaks so much, he gives them a person who does not speak. And he balances you. I explained. And I <laughs> And at the end, she said, hmm. Today, at the Can end of the call, you slept there. I thought that she was joking. I saw that she had refused. And this is the truth. The first night with my wife was the hardest night in my life. They had cancelled her, telling her you have to obey the man. When I said, I said, they told her, please submit. Now, because we want to give things to people not giving it to ourselves. We say, now what did she, they teach her? And she refused. I saw that she had refused. That is when I went to the extreme end, thinking that she will reconcile with love. I told her everything I wanted to be at the edge. When they strike the door, I just jump in and see who had hit the door. All the things I was bringing in. And she said, 
even though you've slept there it's not a mile to reach the door that is when I had even cockroaches these insects making sound in my mind a person who was excited of peace then I knew that I bought a problem in my house when I passed through and slept at the wall I looked at the wall I thought she will be merciful and tap on me and tell me okay you come and sleep here at the end of the day she just slayed and slept in my place I waited and my minds were crossing at the end of the day she was snoring and I said oh my god she slept in my position it came in the morning I felt I was not in the mood. And there is someone who does something and she's feeling peace. I went to work. I returned. When a next night came, I said, oh, sleeping time has come. What should I do? I remained in the sitting room. And I said, she knew that I was angry. Today she will sleep there. Coming, she was at where I sleep, sleeping. I sat at the corner. This really puzzled me. Now all the wise zeking and all my naughty I couldn't know the things within me. Not until Harriet came in. Yeah. Now for you to know where you have to rectify they first bring someone you'll be closer to someone. Now, even if we go to visit, I here on the wall, once we enter the room, I don't wait. <laughs> I just go to my wall knowing this, the, 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 the edge is not mine. The Bible tells you, seek for peace and follow it. Another thing where my wife gave me her time, she found me, I bought my coffee set table and I don't quarrel with anyone. I bought my chairs as well. Now I do my things in a straight line. I sit on my I sit on my chair. I put my legs on my table. And the eyes go direct to my TV set that I bought. But when I entered the room, I leave the shoes aside. I put my feet on my coffee table. And my eyes go to the TV. And my wife came in. She asked me, What should I give you? Should I give you soda or juice? Soda for honeymoon is still there. I said, They give me some juice. I saw she looked at me. And she said, What you've done is not there. And I said, What, mommy? What? And she said they don't lay legs on the table. <laughs> and I said, or is my feet are here? And she said, no, when a visitor comes, it looks bad. I felt some things are walking in my chest. <laughs> my leg. My feet were there for years. And they have not eaten anything from the table. I'm the owner of the table. I took the legs off. But I was I took them, but I was not I was not silent with them. Questioning within me. Did she come to fold me to make me lose peace? When she went outside. 
because I, I was used she found my legs back when she came there is someone who looks at you but the eye speaks a lot she gave me an eye I took them down but as I was thinking what have my feet eaten on the table and she said when a visitor comes it looks bad and this is the truth I grew up when my legs I raised them on a table now to make peace I left the table I went to those who the, the carpenter <laughs> and they, they, they manufactured something for me where I put my feet I came back the following day she had taken the TV from the dining she put it down and I asked <laughs> There is something you question knowing, and I said, Who entered the <laughs> house? And she said, What? <laughs> and I said, The person who removed the TV and put it down, <laughs> she put it from the eye level <laughs> and lowered it. <laughs> and she said, Where the TV is, <laughs> it's where it will always be. And I said, ah. You even command. <laughs> That where you put it, I feel my neck pains. Now my eyes were in an eye line. Straight line. Now she's carving my line. And this is the truth. But how would I know that my character was already diverted unless they bought something, someone I contract with to put right my character that I may pray for it? I can for another thing that she did. The Lord had come up for me. I bought these table covers, chair covers. I bought my chair covers together with my chairs. Now I covered my chairs. Corner to corner. And they had been there for a long time. They were good. I could iron them and put them and I look at them. I enter my car room. All, all chair covers covering it very well. The time I came back, she had changed into a dye format. Now, me, I came from the village, I didn't. And I questioned, who really put things wrong? And she said, which things? My, my chair covers. How? I told her, every day we put them in a square <laughs> format. And she said, oh. And she said, the way you bless them is <laughs> a village shwe. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, it's a village issue. Now, on my thing, she's still speaking against me of the village. If our character will be right, Amen. God places us among his people, they put us right and correct our, our error. The Lord will position you to people who will tame your character. Hearken to another thing that my wife put me right. I love this local yams. hard yams. I came with the sour yams. At 4 p.m. if I bought it, I felt like I have the whole world within me. I came with my sour yam at 4 p.m. And I told her, Mommy, I bought a sour yam. They, they let them uh, prepare it for me. My granny passed on. She had a nickname called I don't kill tomorrow 
and I wait for the evening. I could call myself the grandchild of Sitancha. Why? And my grandfather, if they would bring milk, sometimes it, it was brought at 11 p.m. He had to taste of it. Now my mama could keep. They could give Jaja meat. Hey, oh, they've given you meat. Sometimes they cooked the meat. That it, it was half cooked that they will make it ready tomorrow. They bought him Doda. And he said, I do not kill tomorrow. Give me my meat. Whether it's raw, I would rather take the soup. Where I was, I loved Jaja the more. And he said, he's the right Jaja. So I also took the name of Sitancha, I loved it. Now the grandchild of Sitancha, I came with my sawayam. I gave it to my wife. TV. I could watch the TV. There is something you, you, could, you can even be excited to watch on TV. Everything that comes, it's exciting knowing by the end of it, they'll bring my thing. At the end of the day, they are bought. Matoke. Rice, I don't love it. And I ask mommy. Mommy. How about my tasteless yam? And she said, oh, you bought it late. Do you expect me to cook it now? And I said, you did it down. And she said, no, it was late. <laughs> I ate the matoke, but as I'm saying, now. The following day, I came back excited, saying it is finally there. I didn't even question. But I saw they bought Mato. And I said, Mommy, where our test here? And she said, I forgot it. The following day, I just kept quiet. They cooked it after four days. The grandson of I don't of Sitancha. They bought me a granddaughter of I, I kill tomorrow and other days. She steps on the bricks. She's training me to be patient. And today when you bring your thing. Anytime she will cook it, you don't bring your, your character on her. She will kill and you will eat it after a week. For, for us to work on our character well. And that we may know the things within us that we may deal with them we God brings us different people. The different people. I was a wise acre. I thought I was very clean and neat. And he brought my wife. She was far clean and I folded my cleanness and neatness and put it far. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our character. And the other thing that the Lord does, if it's to deal with our character, He takes us to the wilderness at times. He takes us through a situation. A situation that can really fold us that it may build a divine character in us. In the wilderness, the Lord takes the pride away. Hearken to this. God loves us so much to use man having tested them and we don't want. And the questions of God, he puts them into the wilderness 
Let me give you a scripture. Ezekiel 20. Let me be a bit faster. Ezekiel 20, 25. He says, 20, 20, 20, 35 of I will bring you from the nation, eh, I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations and there face to face. I will Nga, execute judgment upon you. As I judged your ancestors in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will judge you, declares the sovereign Lord. I will take you not of you as you pass under my rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Sometimes you may not know what is within you. Not until you are taken through a situation. How you can tell someone's character is when something has confronted them. That is when you will know. Amidst a lot of needs, it's when you will know that this person is faithful. Here, according to Job in the beginning, everything was finished. And he said, Shall we be given only good things? I left my mother's womb when I was naked, and naked shall I depart this world. But uh, there was, you couldn't know the other character of Job. And the situation was tighter in the desert. All the things were swept away. All the friends were gone. Job says like this in Job 10.9. He said that remember Lord you molded me that I'm human. Now he's coming out of his shell. Like did you not the person you, you, you take through a situation, I'm also a human being. Job 10. 10 9. Remember that you modeled me like clay. Will you now turn me to dust again? The meaning is that the person that you're twisting, I'm not a metal. He says in Job 6. 12. Do I have the strength of a stone? Is my flesh bronze? Hey, Job, is it you who said that shall we be given all, only good things? Now he's going through a burning fire. Hacken to 13. If the Lord is to do a work in you. Uh, 1327. And you fasten my feet in the shekels. You keep close watch on all my parts by putting marks on the sole of my feet. In that he's hindering me. He puts you there and he crosses the line and he says, You should not cross here. Be there. You don't deserve to go here or there. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. Be there. Do you call my, 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 my body a stone? If, if you want to know the good character of a person, it is broken amidst a crisis or amidst any crisis it's it was hard to know the character of peter 
When he was with Jesus, as they were making bread, Peter was a spiritual man. And if you would merely tell Peter, you have a murderer's heart within you, and say, who is a murderer? You would feel Jesus. But the day Jesus was arrested, they, they arrested him, and he would run away. Peter and Peter said, have you seen power? That is the, my boss. He has the power. But this time round, he was arrested. And he was bowed. <laughs> now the person who was tied up, they were tied up the bakery of Peter. And he waited. Peter waited for Jesus to call the fire. And he did not call the fire. He waited for these men who arrested him to fall aside. They were not falling. In the book of John 18.10, it's when the character of Peter that was hidden came out. He, he withdrew his, his, his sword from where it sits and cut off another an ear of another person. It was hard for Jesus to know that Peter can cut people's ears. The, the situation first, first reason. The speed at which he withdrew the sword to cut off an ear, he was even panting. Jesus told him, Peter, Peter, put back the, the knife, the sword in its latter. He put it back when he was not okay. But what is there? The character of Peter that cuts off people's ears and come out once the commotion was there. And the boss told him, put it back. He put it back. He waited, he waited for Mzee to call the fire. At the end of the day, Mzee was just taken. He waited for the power, but the power was gone. The Bible said that Peter walked following Jesus from behind. And when they reached there, they asked Peter, Do you know this man? And he said, I don't know him. Why don't you know him yet you've been with him for three and a half years? The character of this man. I don't know him. Having the power, quali uh, the power oh, qualified. You have the power to just wave your hand and people fall. And then you remain. Humble. And he said, telling you, I don't know that man. If you want to bring commotion home, you woman who is here, go home, they cook food. The man to buy his fish, and as you're cutting, get the tail and put it on the man's plate. And you get the head of the fish and give it to a servant. It's when you will know. <laughs> the, the person who buys the fish eats the head. How can you give me the tail that flaps water? By the character of Jesus, amid is the power. You have not yet known how you can really speak against other people. Because you're poor. But if you want to see how you can brag around, if money comes before your character is not yet dealt with, we don't eat that. 
I don't easily eat everything. I don't easily talk to poor people. There are some people that we have in church because they are poor. But once they get money, on Sunday, you find them in Namungona jogging telling them there is prayer and, and tells you on Sunday is when I get time to work on my body I work on life, my health but the Lord wants us to be that even though you have money you can have a character that does not brag on the poor we have many people who are like this insect called Kasenyanku. When this insect is walking, walks with this treasure, it's a wood collecting insect. But to some born again, they, they are wood collectors. They are in phone. They call. Hello. Hello. I took them a Sitting in taxi. Are you done with the car? You want to tell these people that I'm sitting in a taxi, I'm not badly off. I've bought in a taxi, you pack it there, I'll find it. Have the people gone where they have to go? You feel like the conversation does not fit, but she wants to tell you that I, I'm not badly off. A person can bring a conversation where it doesn't fit. You're talking about something different. Oh, and oh things are expensive. Oh, things are expensive nowadays. I went in the city. Blankets were sold at 300,000. But mine. But three years back, you bought. I bought mine from from a, a, abroad. You want to show off? But now you Things are hard. I no longer buy meat, but chicken is cheap. I eat cheap. But what someone who has a character, even though he's rich, <inaudible> and you have outfits, <inaudible> even though children have gone to the university, when you can control yourself, you see someone shaking their head, Shaking their head. And they say we are going to give one person. Come and testify. And you say, so the kingdom of God is taken by force. They tell you we have given one person. I have a testimony. I have a testimony. No, you will testify the other time. No, 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 no. Says, okay, let even the brother give their testimony. You're shaking your head. Praise the Lord, brethren. Brethren, I went through a bad situation. But I thank the Lord. The Lord came out for me. Can you imagine that I now make hair for 50,000? As you shake your head. And you know pride is bad. It ashames you. You're shaking <laughs> the people look at you and say, uh, oh, I wish you knew that there is hair for a million. She would be quiet. And pride can ashame you. In school, we didn't have a TV at home. And the son of Namatov. I had watched a movie. At school, we wouldn't watch movies. Mama could not give us money because we didn't have it. They took us in when the TV was almost, the film was almost getting done. I watched a bit. 
Man brought a chair and sat in it, leaving it and sat as the chair was moving. Now the sons of the rich men were, were enjoying. There was a movie that they would watch every day. They were conversing. I wanted to fit in them to show them that I watched something. And I told them, I also watched a movie. The people I'm telling they paint. The man could sit in the chair as <laughs> it I want say that one is very old. You're controlling Amen. We want to have a character that fits in all categories of people. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jacalam Kufana and Bikalwa Yang, Jacalam Kufana and Bikambo Yang, Jacalam Kufana and Mukama, Okiana Kwanga Kuritin, Jacalam Kufana, Jacalam Kufana and Bikambo Yang, J